One of the marks of a successful adult is that they have a certain amount of perspective. And the area of perspective that matters the most is in terms of time-sensitive tasks. Listen to these two verses from Numbers chapter 1. The first verse is in verse 2, actually verse 1. The Lord spoke to Moses in the tent of meeting in the desert of Sinai on the first day of the second month, saying, Take a census of the whole nation. Verse 17, Moses and Aaron took these men whose names had been given, and they called the whole community together on the first day of the second month. And the people indicated their ancestry by their clans and families, and the men 20 years old or more were listed by name, one by one, as the Lord had commanded Moses. Same day, folks. That's impressive. I don't know what Moses had on the agenda when he got out of breakfast that morning and had his first cup of Starbucks, but I'm absolutely positive that he wasn't planning to do a census. God spoke and said, by the way, in your spare time today, let's do a census of three or four million people. I'll give you 12 assistants. And he didn't spend three months organizing it. He did it. Now, part of that was due to the skill of the men whom God had given him as assistants. God chose his team well. But part of it was due to Moses' understanding that this, for some reason, was a time-sensitive task, that it needed to be acted on immediately. And that is a father's job to help grow a child into understanding what is time-sensitive and what isn't. As a very young child, we teach instant obedience. No questions asked. Father says, you move right now. As a child gets a little bit older, we give them tasks that need to be accomplished within a certain period of time by a deadline and expect them to manage their time resources appropriately. Most typically, this is homework. The paper is due on Monday the 23rd. Hopefully the child starts working on the paper long before Sunday evening the 22nd. If not, there needs to be some parental pressure teaching a child how to manage their time. But beyond the difference between instant obedience and learning how to manage your time when there is a state of deadline, there is a far greater skill which is knowing what tasks need to take priority over other tasks. To a degree in our culture, this is a function of laterality. Laterality is the science of the two hemispheres of the brain. Broadly speaking, the right hemisphere is the visionary side, sees the big picture, can see what the finished product looks like, but struggles with breaking it down into bite-sized pieces and doing it. Broadly speaking, the left hemisphere of the brain does the bit by bit, is able to reduce a task into small pieces and execute it. When there is a significant deficit in the corpus callosum, which is the web of nerves that com communicate between the right and the left, you will have a visionary who is not able to execute his ideas, or you will have an individual who is chronically busy. They work, 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 work. They always have a to-do list, but they don't seem to get ahead because they're not doing the right things at the right time. They're not being strategic. They don't have the big picture vision to say this is essential and this is secondary. If you forget to put the engine in a spacecraft, it's never going to launch. If you forget to put the decal on the side of the engine, it won't matter a whole lot. And in the finer moments of life, we are continually having to decide what the priorities are, what is first things first, and what needs to be um, put on the back burner. So I teach my staff by every morning doing a group session. We have staff meeting for about 15, 20 minutes from 8.05 to whenever we need to. And I talk out loud with each of the individuals as to what their day looks like. And they will say to me, I need to do this, 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 and this 
typically I'll add two things to the schedule that they hadn't thought of, but then I'm going to work with them to identify what the priorities are, what they're going to do first and what they're going to do second. Now, in one sense, it's a waste of time to have everybody together while I'm working with one individual at a time. I could just sequence them into my office one at a time, but I do it as a group, partly so we can be synchronized as a team, but partly because I want everybody to observe the art of differentiating the vital from the urgent, knowing how to identify the time-sensitive tasks. One of the areas that I am able to do quite naturally that doesn't come easily to some of the others is anticipating where the choke points will be on the equipment. All of our equipment is not equal. So we have equipment that has video capabilities, some that has graphic capabilities, some that has audio capabilities for editing. And sometimes a person is going to have four tasks in a day. They have two computers assigned to them and I have to sequence. So while you're working on this computer doing this, you have this computer working through this process. I over and over and over again articulate for them on a daily basis what it looks like to prioritize their task, teasing out the tasks that are vital from those that are urgent. There's a world of difference between vital and urgent and most people who have not been fathered in this area are going to allow the tyranny of the urgent to devour their lives. They go from one crisis to another and they remain in crisis because they have not learned how to set a crisis aside while they deal with the vital things. We are broadly successful with this approach. Megan rarely gets any attention from me in terms of priorities. Once or twice I'll say, have we made any progress on this issue? Where's this problem? What's happening over here? Um, but most of the time I just will ask her a question to know whether I can dump more work on her. So I'll say, how's your inbox? Where do we stand with this project or the other? And she will tell me if she has discretionary time. That's all I need to know. If she has discretionary time, I give her more work. If she doesn't, I just turn her loose because she has learned over the years from this practice and repetition how to separate out the urgent from the vital and how to prioritize her time. Desiree is right on her heels. Desiree um, has a little bit of tweaking on her schedule, probably two days out of five. But broadly speaking, Desiree runs a very complex little operation in the back room with printing and burning and, and graphics and assembly and shipping, and she stays on top of it. Sometimes I have to force a vital issue to the top of the pile, but for the most part she gets very little time spent in adjusting her schedule. The newbies uh, have no concept of the bigger picture, the complexity of all that we're doing. So we have to coach them very carefully, not just in what to do, but in why. So today I sat down with Lily. She started this week. I gave her the task of computer maintenance. I gave her five issues that need to be done on every computer every month, told her to create a spreadsheet, and then explained that two of the five issues take a minute or two where she sits down at the computer, does it, and it's done. Three of the five are going to take anywhere from 15 minutes to four hours. Therefore, she has to do it at night. Therefore, she has to plan ahead during the course of the month which computers she's going to leave running any given night doing these maintenance items. Now, I've given her the task. And I will stand back, leave her completely alone, and check in on her for in two weeks' time to see how she's doing. I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I give them the freedom to excel. I rather suspect that she will be absolutely picture perfect when I come back. I gave her the goal of being done by the 20th of the month with the maintenance so that she doesn't get caught in a squeeze at the end of the month. I suspect she'll get it done. But I won't know 
until I come back and meet with her. And when I sit her down and say, give me your spreadsheet, show me where you are, what day of the month is it, how much have you accomplished this month, will I know whether she can do it or not? And if she can't, if, she has, if she's running behind, then I don't tell her what to do. I ask the why questions. Why did you not do this? What is happening? Are you having difficulties with this or that? Because I want to equip her to be able to manage her own time. The last thing I want is to have to hold her hand with a schedule every day for the next 20 years. I want each one of my employees to become like Megan, where in 15 seconds we can synchronize around the day, they know what to do, and they know what the time-sensitive tasks are, what the urgent is, and what the vital is, and they can manage their own time. But we get there through role-playing. We get there through over and over again with real-life situations, say, why did you do this instead of this? How could you have done it better? Aha, here's the choke point, here's the blind spot. Perspective about time does not come naturally. Whether you're right brain, left brain, or you have a fairly decent integration of the two, it absolutely takes training to give you perspective on what to do when there's more things in the day than you can possibly do. So fathers, look at the people under you, look at your children, look at your employees, and begin to look for opportunities where you can give them an objective with a deadline, stand back, watch how they execute, and then explore with them what it was like and affirm them for the areas that they chose well and coach them in the areas that they did not choose well. You will not know where the wiring glitch is. You will not know what the problem is until you study it and see a pattern. I had one secretary for a while that absolutely didn't like people. If I gave her a list of 10 things to do, five were phone calls to make and five were tasks, I could guarantee she would do all of the tasks and she would stretch the tasks out till 10 minutes before quitting time so she wouldn't have time to make the phone calls. I had another secretary who was a quintessential social butterfly and she could take the same list and make those five phone calls last at least five hours so that she didn't have to get to the tasks. And as I watch the pattern, as I give them freedom to fail, as I create a big enough playing field for them to be themselves and do things wrong, I can then circle back around and say, did you know this about yourself? Are you aware that when I give you a list of things and I give my priorities, it runs through the filter of your personality and your distaste for this or that. Can we agree on the fact that when I say this needs to be done first, it means this needs to be done like first. And so you work, you role play. Give them a task, give them freedom to fail, circle back around, look for the patterns, ask the why questions, and over a period of time, you can teach your sons and your daughters how to evaluate tasks against the available time and to determine which tasks are five time sensitive and how to execute them properly. Given the fact that every day there's a new day, a new set of tasks, and a new block of time from God, you have plenty of raw material at your disposal to grow your sons and daughters. Go do it.